this takes air and this takes air. So why can't this tire inflator air up both? Technically it probably could, but they don't really make adapters for it because this is built for pressure, not volume. And you don't really need a lot of pressure in your pad, you just need a lot of volume. Whereas in your tires, you actually need a little bit of pressure to get them inflated, but the amount of volume is five times less than it takes to fill up this sleeping pad. Your tire inflator is essentially a mini air compressor with a motor and a pump without the tank. In comparison, this is the XPED widget pump. This is designed for volume, not pressure. Essentially, this is a motor with a fan that pushes a lot of air, but it doesn't build a lot of pressure. It only builds about half a PSI, which is more than enough for that sleeping pad. Now, before anybody says anything, yes, there are pumps on the market that do both. The ones I have found are bigger and larger and you know they'll fit in a car but not necessarily small like this that'll fit on the motorcycle now to demonstrate this we're going to do a couple of things we're going to hook up this and run it to fill up a small bag so that way you can see how long it takes in comparison to this and then we're actually going to run it on the sleeping pad to make sure and see how long it actually takes if it doesn't burn up so let's talk about flow rates this as a fan puts out 290 liters per minute which equates to about 10 cfm this, on the other hand, and all the ones that I could find on Amazon are around 30 liters per minute or about one CFM. So there's a major airflow difference. And even these online that I've seen that have like a high speed or like a, a quick inflate mode only got up to maybe 50 liters per minute, which isn't that much compared to this 290 liters per minute. Starting with the XPED widget, I'm going to air this up. This is very crude, I know, but all I've done is just rolled the end of it up and clamped it so that way I've got one little port to use. And I'm just gonna hold this on there. Um, maybe, does that fit? No, nah, I'm just gonna hold this on there. I'm just gonna hold it on the port and let's see how quick this goes. So I counted about seven seconds in my head doing that. So that's pretty quick. All right. So I've got my valve stem. I'm just going to shove it in here and see if I can make that kind of stick in there just a little bit, just so that way none of the air comes out. I'm trying to get the tightest seal possible so I don't lose any air coming from the air compressor because I know that it's going to be a minute. So, Okay, so there we go. Valve stem is in the port. So we say about eight seconds on the other one. Um, I could take the little stem out. I'm not going to do that because that's not really accurate, right? So I'm going to lock this on here and let's give it a whirl. Okay, I'm going to call that even. That was about 30 seconds in my head. Um, I'll use the camera counter to kind of get, verify that. But 30 seconds versus 10, or less than 10. So, so there's the bag test. Again, that was just to see, and it actually kind of blew out the side a little bit. So again, this is gonna take way longer to fill up that pad, but it did do it. So keeping that in mind, we'll do the full pad uh, with both just to see how long it actually takes. So we've got our widget pump. We've got our big Agnes pad. This is a 25, sorry, this is a 20 by 72. So a standard pad. It's not the wide, it's not the long. It'll take the least amount of time. Uh, usually this takes less than a minute to air this up. Uh, it takes about a minute to air up the Campmeister Deluxe because it's a 30 by 78. So yeah, ready, set, go. change in pitch you heard the change in the pitch so i'm gonna call that done and voila we have an inflated pad uh again this thing is only going to put in about uh, i think it's four kilopascals so maybe half a psi if that and it doesn't need that much for me when i sleep on this this is actually too much so let's see how long it takes to do the air compressor the motor pumps uh, i'm gonna have to take all the air out of this and roll it out so this is a custom made piece 
The white piece is actually our XPED widget to Big Agnes pad adapter because, well, they don't make one and the Big Agnes pads have a bigger fill port. So we 3D print these. Um, you can get them on our website. It'll fit the XPED widget specifically just because of the way the grooves are and it's keyed. Um, but then I just found a valve stem and shoved it in there. I had to trim it to make it fit. Um, so, ta-da! I'm actually just gonna hang this because I don't feel like holding it, which is this is kind of the way it's designed anyway. So, ready, set, and go. All right, I'm gonna cut it off there. We're right at about uh, four minutes and almost 50 seconds. Um, I don't wanna let it keep going because it's just gonna keep going and I don't wanna pop this thing. That would be terrible. So yeah, um, actually I am surprised. I did not expect this pump to be able to air this up in five minutes. So yeah, um, again, I'm impressed. I did not think it was gonna take under five minutes to air it up. I thought it was gonna take about 10 or 20 minutes to air it up and I thought this would overheat. So I was kind of technically wrong in the theory that the volume of this would be so much that it would cause this to overheat, but it did not get hot because I guess it wasn't generating the pressure like you would in a tire when they get really hot for one. Now this hose was pretty warm, um, but the pump itself hadn't been to a point where I thought it was gonna overheat. So uh, that's a good thing. But would I still recommend it to inflate your air pad? No, I still wouldn't recommend it because it's gonna bring extra wear and tear to your pump. And as something, as a, a lifeline, as a you know self-rescue device, I don't wanna put more wear and tear than I need to because, I mean, it is tech, right? Things can happen and I'd rather have it readily available and know that it's gonna work, especially if you're going from campsite to campsite every single night that means you're gonna be using this five minutes a day, every day, trying to air up your pad. If you're doing a BDR, that's a week long, or if you're doing long weekends, you're doing it every weekend, it's excessive uh, wear and tear on something that you would really need. And hopefully nothing's wrong with it when it comes time to need it for airing up your tires. That's just a personal opinion on myself um, and what I would do, but here, we've done a self test. We actually know now um, am I going to make, because I know everybody's asking, because it's the number one question I get, am I going to make a Schrader valve kit to inflate the pads? I am not, because again, I don't want people to cause extra wear and tear, and it's not really efficient or economical, like economical, excuse me. Um, you've got to, this one is, you know, you've got to hook it up to the bike, so it's wired, so you don't have to worry about charging it. But realistically, if you've got one, of the battery powered ones, which I do have one and they're nice. Um, if you're using that all the time to air up this, then you're constantly having to recharge it. And again, excessive wear and tear that's unnecessary. So um, I'm not gonna make a Schrader valve to fit air pads to fill them in there. There's people out there that could probably do it themselves if they want to, that's fine. There's plenty of tech out there. There's plenty of 3D printers that somebody can make something. But me personally, I don't recommend it and I would advise against it just for the sake of being efficient and extra um, extra wear on a device. So uh, yeah, that's my hot take on that. Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed me um, testing in the garage and actually putting it to the test and putting the theory to the test. Uh, this is fun, I enjoyed this, this is pretty cool. I always like proving myself wrong if I can. So um, thank you for watching and ride safe and get out there and have fun. I don't want to pop this thing. That would be terrible. Yeah.
We're doing this. Yeah, it's happening. Um, actually, before I do that, da, 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 da. Oh, oh. always wear PPE and be smart about it. Your eyes are something you don't want to lose, so, um, at gap, well, yeah, I should probably put some more stuff on, but, uh, yeah, I'm just going to let this thing go and see what happens. Jesus Christ. Oh my, okay. So I've got the air compressor hooked up, my big one. And so this pushes us out a lot more because it's got a tank on it. So it's got a lot more volume. 10, 15, 18, 22, 30. 40 PSI, 50, oh, fuck. Oh my God. Oh my God, okay. That was it? Oh my God. I thought it, was, I thought it popped, I thought it blew out. It didn't even blow out yet, look. Okay. It just popped one of the seams in the middle. Oh, there we go. Oh, fuck. I think it finally popped. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh, no. Okay, so let's, let's keep going. So the seams popped on the inside. Um, none of the seams on the outside popped. So I got one seam left here. And then after that, all it's got left is the, um, that's impressive, because that was like 50 PSI. Okay, well this thing is rock hard. It is not happening. So, we're just going to do it with a knife. <laughs> uh, well, if you ever wanted to know what's inside of a big Agnes sleeping pad, there you go. <sighs> Thanks for staying to the end and watching all this, because I did not expect it to take that long. Um, yeah. So, I hit it with the knife. I got it started right on the top. Uh, yeah, and it just split it right open. All right. 